lecture is probably best approached after you deal with negative exponents and distributing and uh, factoring negative exponents out of expressions. This is a topic called power functions and uh, it fits very nicely when you're talking about negative or integer exponents um, because well one it kind of reintroduces the idea of a function so it like connects functions and exponents and two this is actually the where exponential expressions come into play in real life is with power functions so the prerequisites you'll need here are uh, a knowledge of exponents um, you need to know the laws of exponents you need to know everything about negative exponents positive exponents and zero exponents you also need to know about functions, domains, ranges, what a function is, how to evaluate a function. So if you're lacking in any of those skills, please go back and watch one of the previous videos. Let's first approach the definition of a power function. It's just a function of the form f of x equals kx to the p. Notice there's no plus or minus at the end, so we're not adding 5 to the end of this or anything. It's literally just k times x to the p power that is considered a power function. And k and p are considered to be constants, which actually is kind of interesting in this case because, well, simple examples would be stuff like uh, f of x is equal to 3x to the 7th. That's a power function because the fact is it has the form kx to the p, and the coefficient is a real number and, or a constant, and the power is a constant. But something that might be interesting to you maybe something like 1.1x uh, to the um, negative 3 that's a power function because again both the coefficient and the power are constants and oddly enough something like this um, let's say negative 11x to the 1.8 we haven't seen this kind of exponent yet so don't worry about it it's not going to be treated in this talk but uh, this is considered a power function as well because again the the exponent and the coefficient are both constant. Now I need to mention really briefly what the domain of a power function is. So if we're given something like um, f of x is equal to k times x to the power p, there's a couple situations that occur. So if p is greater than 0, so in other words it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, whatever, okay, and uh, I should also mention here, and p is an element of the integers, so that means, that little z there means uh, that it's the set of integers. So it's positive and it's an integer. In other words, it's a natural number. Then, uh, the domain is all reals. And in fact, let me go ahead and use... Uh, remind you of what the notation is for the set of all reals. This notation here is the set of all reals. And so therefore you kind of see why that z with a little bar in it might be a set of numbers as well because when you have that extra little bar we generally use that for a set of numbers. Now I have, the, it is a kind of a subtle distinction that um, the number, the power p has to be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, something like that for the domain to be all reals. It can't be 1.1 or 1.5 or anything like that because there is a, a little issue with that that we'll discuss later on. But as long as it's a natural number like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the domain of our power function is all reals. Now if p is less than 0, and again p is an integer, so in other words, p could be something like negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Then uh, the do domain is a set of all reals not including 0. So it just can't be 0. And the reason why is because, for example, think about a power function that looks like this, 3x to the negative 7. Well, that's the same thing as saying 3 over x to the 7th. Now you can easily see... Remember, the domain is set of all values that we can plug in. I definitely cannot plug in 0 because I'd be dividing by 0. So that is, that's an issue. That's why our domain is restricted if our power is negative. 
So one way you can easily remember this is that there really is no restriction unless you're dividing by zero. And you get to divide by zero, or you don't get to, but you're forced to divide by zero at some point if you're dividing by a variable. So just know that negative exponents mean that you're going to be dividing by a variable. Now really, <clears throat> there's only a few examples we have to take in this lecture to really consider what a power function is. Um, because the evaluation of a power function works just like evaluating any function. You plug a number in, you get a number out. But let's take a look at what is a f power function. Of these examples, one, two, or three, or four of them might be power functions. Let's take a look if they are of the right form. In fact, let me go ahead and add one more in here now that I'm thinking about it. I'd like this m of, let's just do m of x, is equal to 3x uh, to the 17th minus 4. All right, so part A, is that a power function? Well, it's a linear function. It definitely is a linear function because when I graph this out, I know it's going to be a line. It's mx plus b format. But it's not a power function. The reason why it's not a power function is because uh, it has this additional little plus 1 on the end. In other words, it's almost like y equals um, k t to the power p. The problem is that we have this illegal operation on the end of a plus one. That doesn't work out. That's an issue. So we can't have an addition or a subtraction on the end for it to be considered purely a power function. On this next one, the question is, is it of the form y equals some number times the variable to a power? And it is. We see this number here is three and the power here is 14 so yes this is definitely a power function the next one example c is that a power function well let's see is it of the form y equals some number times the variable to some power and i see the number out front is pi remember pi is a number it's not a variable it's a number and the power here is definitely a number because they, they write that as negative 11. So that is definitely a power function as well. The next one, is it written as y equals some number times the variable to a power? Well, it does have a number out front. That's a 14. Whoops, I was going to write a 17 there for some reason. And But unfortunately, the power is a variable in this case. This is not a power function. This is a different kind of function that we'll experience or run into later on. So this is definitely not a power function. Even though it has a power in it, that's what's deceiving about it. It has a power. It often gets confused as a power function, but if your power is a variable, it's not considered a power function. And finally, this last one, is it of the form y equals some number times the variable raised to a power? Well, we do have a number, three. We do have a power, 17. But we also have this additional little minus 4 at the end, which is not what we want. And we don't want a minus 4 at the end. So this is also not, or no, it is not a power function. Finally, we really don't have much else we can do with power functions other than evaluate them at this point. So somebody might ask you to evaluate a power function at a value. That means just plug in the value, right? So our input here is a negative 3 fourths. And again, recall the strength of function notation is that not only do you get to see an output when you get to an answer, but you also can see what you plugged in to get that output. This is telling me what my input was. And then when I do a bunch of work, I'll find out what my output is for that given input. So that's the strength of, of function notation. Again, follow the order of operations here. On the inside of the parentheses, if I can simplify that, I will, but I cannot. So the next thing I do is go outside the parentheses and apply that negative exponent. So in other words, I flip the fraction. Now I'll go ahead and apply the power. That's 5 times 4 to the 4th over a negative 3 to the 4th which is equal to 5 times 4 to the 4th power is like 16 times 16, or 256. Negative 3 to the 4th. Remember, that's a negative 3 times a negative 3. It's a positive 9. 
times a negative 3 times a negative 3, which is another positive 9, which is going to be 81. And finally, multiply 5 over 1 times this fraction. I think that's 1280 over 81. Let me just double check. That's 1,000, 250, plus 30, 280. Yep, 1,280 over 81. Really, there's not much else you can do with power functions for right now, other than you might see them in applications. But in applications, they generally say, hey, this is a power function. Please evaluate it at whatever. So it's, it's pretty straightforward when you're given something uh, in an application for a power function. Thank you.